I'm Vanessa Francis. Let's begin. So as you can see, for today, we're looking at equivalent sentences and construction shift. So here are our lesson objectives. First of all, you should be able to analyze equivalent sentences and construction shift items. You should also be able to select responses to equivalent sentences and construction shift questions. And of course, you need to be able to discuss responses to equivalent sentences and construction shift questions. And here's a list of the sources for today's exercises. So we had various English language past papers from CSEC, of course, the Observer Lecture Series, a comprehensive English course, and English for All, both of them at the CSEC level. So, of course, let's start with our equivalent sentences. Now, look at this picture. What are you looking at? Now, the idea behind equivalent sentences, of course, is that you are going to get an original sentence, and that original sentence will yield another sentence that you need to spot among the options given. Now, the idea is they're not going to be exactly the same in wording because they're going to be phrased differently. However, even though you notice one ball is blue, the other is yellow, they're both of equal weight. So the idea is the original sentence and the one you choose to be closest to it in meaning will not look exactly the same. However, they will mean the same thing. And that is what you need to remember as we go through these exercises. They won't look exactly the same. However, they mean the same thing. So here are some tips. Of course, obviously, you have to read the original sentence very carefully. Because if you don't read it carefully, you might miss a key word or a key phrase, and that will throw you off completely. Naturally, you need to look at all the options. Don't just stop at the one that you think is the answer. Read them all because again there might be another option there that is actually the answer but you stopped before you got there so you chose the wrong one. After you have read all the options now it's time to eliminate so you have to narrow them down. Sometimes it's very easy to narrow down some of the options because one or two of them might obviously not be the answer. However, there are cases when you look at all four options and you have to wonder which one is the one. So be very careful in eliminating the ones that you believe are not the answer. And then after you have narrowed it down to possibly two, hopefully not more than two, then you have to, of course, analyze these two carefully. So you want to ensure that whichever one you choose is conveying the same meaning. Remember, you know, it will not look exactly the same as the original. However, the meaning it conveys should be as close to the original as is possible. So keep those tips in mind. And now let us start. So this is what your instructions are likely to look like. For each of the following sentences, choose the option that is nearest in meaning to the original sentence. And here's our first sentence now. After the football match that Trinity High School won, there was much jubilation among supporters, but a dozen fans were injured. Now look carefully at your options. Which one means the same thing as the original? Is it A, a dozen fans were injured during the celebrations after Trinity High School won the football match? Compare that to the original. Is it B, Trinity High School won the football match, but a dozen fans were injured during the chaos that followed? Compare that to the original as well. C, Although Trinity High School won the football match, jubilant fans injured a dozen supporters. Is that your answer? Or is it D? Trinity High School won the football match causing jubilant supporters to injure a dozen fans. Now look at your options carefully. Which of those four has the same meaning as after the football match that Trinity High School won? 
there was much jubilation among supporters, but a dozen fans were injured. Which of these four conveys the same idea or is the closest to that idea? By now you should know your answer, so let's check if you're correct. A. A dozen fans were injured during the celebrations after Trinity High School won the football match. And notice too that it is a more condensed form. So this actually can help you with even your summary writing because you may be able to rephrase and reword in a shorter form, but you definitely need to know how to rephrase anything that you got from the original passage for your summary writing. So we should agree, A has the same meaning as the original. All right. Let's look at another sentence. His books are interesting and provocative. So this one is very short, but shorter does not necessarily mean easier. So look at your options now. A, his books are most exciting. B, his books tend to make the reader angry. C, his books are appealing and stimulate discussion. Or D, his books are concerned with controversial topics. Which of those four, look carefully, convey the same idea or as close as possible the same idea as his books are interesting and provocative? You have your answer yet? I hope you have the right one. And if you have the right one, it would be C. His books are appealing and stimulate discussion. Interesting, appealing, provocative, stimulate discussion. The same idea is being conveyed by both those sentences. All right, let's go on. The West Indies could have won the test match if Lara hadn't fallen ill suddenly. All right, let's look at our options now. The West Indies lost the test match because Lara was suddenly ill. Or is it B? If Lara hadn't suddenly fallen ill, there was a possibility that the West Indies would have won the match. Hmm, perhaps it's C. Lara caused the West Indies to lose the test match because he suddenly became ill. Hmm, all right, we have one more, D. There was no likelihood that the West Indies would have won the test match if Lara was ill. Now look carefully at the original. The West Indies could have won the test match if Lara hadn't fallen ill suddenly. Which of these four conveys the idea that had Lara not fallen ill, the team would have won? Be very careful because there are distractors in there. There's possibly one in there that is appealing to you and it's waving to you and saying, I am the one, but that one is not the one, all right? So by now, you would have narrowed it down to this one. If Lara hadn't suddenly fallen ill, there was a possibility that the West Indies would have won the test match. Same idea being conveyed as the original. So be very careful because you will have another sentence, at least one other sentence that looks very, very appealing, very, very tempting, but resist temptation. Our next sentence. The government's newfound wealth, oil, became the salvation of the country's economy. All right, absorb the meaning of that one. Look at our options now. The economic benefits gained from the new oil discovery enabled the government to save the nation's economy. All right, that's a good option. Let's look at another one. The discovery of oil by the government added greatly to the profitable mineral resources of the country. Hmm, that one looks good too. Let's look at the other one. The oil helped the government to increase its economic benefits to the nation. Also looks good. Let's look at the last one. The now rich government enabled the economy to prosper by selling oil to non-producing nations. So we have four options, but which of those four means nearest the same thing as the government's new found wealth, oil, became the salvation of the country's economy. So which one of them tells you that 
oil is the new way that the government is going to boost the economy and not just boost it, but save it. So be very careful which of those appeals to you. Be very careful. You know it's something that is new. You know it's oil. And you know that it's supposed to help the economy, more or less rescue the economy. By now you have an answer, so let's check. Did you say A? I hope you did. The economic benefits gained from the new oil discovery enabled the government to save the nation's economy. Salvation, save. Very close in meaning. All right, let's move on. Another short one, but again, shorter does not mean easier. No food or drink is allowed in the classroom. So, is it A, do not eat or drink while class is in session? Is it B, you are not permitted to enter the classroom with drink or food? Is it C, you may bring food or drink to the classroom after the class has been finished? Or is it D, no food or drink is allowed in the class during class time? Which of these means the same as no food or drink is allowed in the classroom? Let's look at our options. A is saying you can't have these things while class is in session. Is that what the original said? Did it mention the class going on or just the classroom? Look at B. You are not permitted to enter the classroom with drink or food. Sounds a little closer perhaps. Look at C. You may bring food or drink to the classroom after the class has been finished. Again, it mentions a class and class being in session. And now that class is not in session, that's when you're allowed to bring the food in. Is that what the original is saying as well? Look at the last one. No food or drink is allowed in the class during class time. Now, if you look carefully, D and A basically mean the same thing. So they're equal to each other, but they are not equal to the original. So your options would be B or C. So now that I've narrowed it down for you, you should be able to tell me which one it is. So let's see if you got it right. So you are not permitted to enter the classroom with food or drink. Same thing. The classroom is off limits when it comes to food and drink. All right, let's look at another one. Another short one. Every cloud has a silver lining. Now, we have all, most of us, must have heard this at some point in time. No, the idea is, basically you're going to translate this. What does this mean? So does it mean silver can be seen on every cloud in the sky? Does it mean make good use of your opportunities? Does it mean the edge of a cloud has a grayish appearance? Or does it mean you can derive some benefit from every bad thing that happens to you? What is the meaning of Every cloud has a silver lining. You should know this. You've always been told this at different points in time. So are you going to go very literally and talk about the actual color in A, the actual color in C? Or are you going to be more figurative and look at B or D? And if you look at B or D, which one is closer to the idea being conveyed in Every cloud has a silver lining. Yes, you know it. Good, here we go. You can derive some benefit from every bad thing that happens to you. So that is the meaning behind every cloud has a silver lining. Very good. All right, let's continue. The budget speech was undoubtedly one of the briefest in years. We should be so lucky. A. The budget speech was without doubt a very brief one. B. This budget speech was among the briefest we have had for a long time. C. For a long time, the budget speeches have been too long. Or D. This year, the budget speech was better than all the others. Now, if you look closely, one of those is obviously not the answer. Which one is obviously not the answer? Good, D, because there was nothing said about the budget speech being the best one 
are better than any other. It just talked about the length of it. So D is obviously not the answer. So let's look at A to C now. The budget speech was without a doubt a very brief one. All right, so the budget speech is short. But look at the original. It says one of the briefest in years. So A is not comparing it to anything. It's just saying this one is short. So we can take out A as well. So A is gone, D is gone. Let's look now. This budget speech was among the briefest we have had for a long time. Okay, sounds, sounds like we can work with that, but let's look at DC as well. For a long time, the budget speeches have been too long. No, those two could work. However, you're looking for the one that conveys the same idea as the original. So one of these talks about the fact that this speech compared to others is one of the shortest we have seen in a while. Whereas the other one doesn't talk about this speech in particular. It talks about all the speeches before saying that they have been fairly long. So you know the answer by now. Which one is your answer? Good, your answer should be B. This budget speech was among the briefest we have had for a long time. It compares the speech to others and gives you the idea that over a period of time, this one is one of the shorter speeches. Very good. All right, let's move on. After cycling for about an hour, many of the students appeared to be tired. Be very careful with this one. So A says, at the end of an hour's cycling, many of the students seemed tired. Okay. Sounds promising. B says, many of the students appeared tired after cycling for about an hour. All right, interesting. Let's look at C. Many of the students complained of being tired after cycling for about an hour. All right, something going on there. And let's look at the last one. Most of the students looked tired when they returned from an hour's cycling. So we have some critical analysis to do for this one because all of them mention the time and all of them mention the tiredness. But which one of them says about an hour and the students appearing tired? That is the trick. So let's look at the last one. Most of the students look tired when they return from an hour's cycling. So the first part can work, but look at the last part. It said an hour's cycling. Original didn't say that. It said about an hour. So it gave us an approximation. So let's put that one aside. Look at C. Many of the students complained of being tired after cycling for about an hour. All right. So this one gives us the approximation of about an hour. But look what it says about the students. They complained of being tired. The original didn't have them complaining of being tired. It just said they appeared to be tired. So we have to put that aside as well. Let's go up. Many of the students appeared tired after cycling for about an hour. Hmm, very promising. Let's look at A. At the end of an hour cycling, many of the students seemed tired. So which one is it? Is it A or is it B? Which one captures the idea conveyed in the original? After about an hour, many of the students appeared tired. They both say the students appeared tired. They both mention a time. However, one gives us an approximate, while the other one gives us a definite. So your answer, I hope, is B. Many of the students appeared tired after cycling for about an hour. So let's move on to the next one. James has to give up his pet turtle if he wants to keep fish. All right, so keep that in mind. He has to give up his turtle if he wants to keep fish. So A says, if James does not want his pet turtle, he can keep fish. All right. B says, James has to keep fish if he does not want his pet turtle. Hmm, interesting. C says, James will be able to keep fish only if he does not have his pet turtle. Interesting. And D says, James keeps fish so that he can give up his pet turtle. Very interesting. 
So which of these conveys the same idea that you got from James has to give up his pet turtle if he wants to keep fish? You should know this because only one of them really gives you the idea that he has to give up the turtle in order to have fish. And that one is C. James will be able to keep fish only if he does not have his pet turtle. So he has to give the turtle up or give it away in order to have fish. Perhaps the turtle will eat them. We don't know. All right, let's look at another one. Being the tallest boy in the class, he was always selected for basketball matches, although he was not the most popular. All right, so keep that in mind. He's the tallest boy in the class, always selected for basketball matches, but he's not very popular. Let's see which of these conveys that same idea. So A, even though he was not well liked, his height provided him with the opportunity for playing in basketball matches. B says, he was reluctantly selected for basketball matches. C says, since he was tall, he was not popular, but he was often selected for basketball matches. And then D says, although his height allowed him to play in basketball matches, it made him unpopular. So let's analyze now. Right off the bat, which one can you throw out without even hesitating? Very good, you can throw out B because all B says he was reluctantly se selected for basketball matches. It mentions nothing about his height. It mentions nothing about him being popular or not. So get rid of B. Let's look at what we have left. Look at D. Although his height allowed him to play in basketball matches, it made him unpopular. Did the original sentence blame his height for him being unpopular? No, it did not. So we can get rid of B, we can get rid of D. Let's look at A and C now. So even though he was not well liked, his height provided him with the opportunity of playing in basketball matches. All right, so we have the idea of him being unpopular and we also have the idea of him being tall enough to be allowed to play basketball. But is that the answer? Let's look at C. Since he was tall, he was not popular, but he was often selected for basketball matches. What is the idea coming through in C? Since he was tall, he was not popular. That idea being conveyed is that it is his height that caused him to be unpopular. Is that what it says in the original? No, it doesn't. So what is their answer then? Naturally, it has to be A. So even though he was not well liked, his height provided him with the opportunity of playing in basketball matches. All right, let's look at one more. A fight between supporters of the two teams erupted after the rugby match when it ended in a draw. All right, good. Let's look at A. The supporters of the rugby teams began fighting when they knew that the match would end in a draw. Okay. The rugby match caused supporters of the two teams to fight, but it ended in a draw. Interesting. A draw in the rugby match led to a fight between the supporters of the two teams. Hmm, all right. And lastly, there was a draw between the supporters of the two teams after they fought at the rugby match. Which of these four conveys the same idea as a fight between supporters of the two teams erupted after the rugby match ended. Which of those conveys the same idea? You are correct. It is C. A draw in the rugby match led to a fight between the supporters of the two teams. Okay, so now our next sentence says, realizing that her suitcase was left on the bus, the woman desperately tried to attract the conductor's attention. So remember, you're looking for which of these options conveys that meaning or is closest to that meaning. So A says, when the desperate woman realized that she was leaving the bus without her suitcase, she tried to attract the conductor's attention. 
All right. The next one says, the woman became aware of the fact that she no longer had her suitcase and did her best to catch the conductor's, sorry, catch the attention of the bus conductor. Next one says, the woman made all attempts to attract the conductor's attention to the suitcase, which she had left on the bus. And the last one says, the conductor's attention was attracted by the woman who, in desperation, had forgotten her suitcase on the bus. All right. So remember now, which one of these conveys the idea, realizing that her suitcase was left on the bus? The woman desperately tried to attract the conductor's attention. Now, the word desperate is used a number of times. But is every sentence it's used in conveying the same idea? So we have, when the desperate woman realized she was leaving the bus without her suitcase, she tried to attract the conductor's attention. And we have desperate again where? Oh, we don't have it again. Sorry. All right. So which of these? gives us this idea. She realized that she left her suitcase on the bus and she tried to attract the conductor's attention to it. Is it D? The conductor's attention was attracted? No, because it says she was trying to get his attention. Look at C. She made all attempts to attract the conductor's attention, yes, to the suitcase which she had left on the bus. Oh, not quite. Look at B. She became aware that she, was no, that she no longer had her suitcase and tried to catch the attention of the conductor. All right. And back to A. The desperate woman realized she was leaving without her suitcase, tried to con attract the conductor's attention. Now, which one of them tells you that she left it on the bus, the suitcase that is, and after leaving it on the bus, she tries to attract the conductor's attention. Yes, you are correct. It is B. She became aware that she no longer had her suitcase. So that is the fact that she realized she left it on the bus. And then the next part says she did her best to catch the attention of the conductor. Again, desperately tried to get his attention. All right, very good. So let's move on now. Much is being done to develop tourism in our country by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities. So A says, it is important to provide good hotel accommodation and facilities for tourists. All right, interesting. B says, Good hotel accommodation and facilities are crucial if we want to develop tourism. Hmm, okay. C says, we are, going, we are doing a great deal to boost tourism by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities. And then the last one says, if we do not provide good hotel accommodation and facilities, tourists will not come to our country. So look at these options carefully. Much is being done to develop tourism in our country by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities. If you look at D, you'll realize D is conveying a slightly different message because D says if we do not supply these things, if we do not provide these things, then tourists will not come. So the idea is somewhat different, related in a vague way, but not the same thing. So D is out. Look at C now, we're doing a great deal to boost tourism by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities. That one sounds feasible, so let's hold on to that. B says, good hotel accommodation and facilities are crucial if we want to develop tourism. Hmm, all right. Is it really capturing the essence of the original though? And then A says, it is important to provide good hotel accommodation and facilities for tourists. Okay, so which ones, because there are two of them, that you can eliminate right away? And which one should you keep because it has similar ideas to this one that much is being done to develop tourism in our country. Much is being done. So we are actually doing something. Now notice A says it is important to do it. 
and B basically says these things are important as well. So A and B are similar to each other, but they're not really similar to the original, unfortunately. So we can leave it at C. We are doing a great deal to boost tourism by providing good hotel accommodation and facilities. Very good for that. Now let's look at this one. So engrossed was he in his task that he did not hear his sister enter the room. Our options are, <clears throat> sorry, his task was so difficult that he did not observe his sister's entry. All right. B says, he did not hear his sister enter the room because of the job he was doing. Hmm, feasible maybe. C says, his sister's entry did not attract his attention because he was enjoying what he was doing. And then the last one says, he was so preoccupied with what he was doing that he was unaware of his sister's entry. Now, in order to figure out which of these is the right option to choose, you have to know the meaning of the word engrossed. When you are engrossed in something, what are you? You're focusing on it completely. You're completely, I wouldn't say distracted by it, but you are free from being distracted from anything else. When you're engrossed in something, you're paying it your utmost attention. You're giving it your utmost attention. You are formatting yourself. You're looking closely at it. You are absorbed in it. You are engrossed. So which of these tells you that this young man was so taken up by what he was doing that he didn't even hear his sister enter. And I'm sure there have been cases where you're watching a movie, maybe you're studying, and somebody comes into the room, they might even call your name, and you do not even hear. So you should be able to identify with this sentence. So which of these four gives you the same meaning? You see it? Of course. Yes, you are correct. The last one. He was so preoccupied with what he was doing that he was unaware of his sister's entry. He was so engrossed, preoccupied. He did not hear her enter. He was unaware that she had come into the room. Next one. The bright colors of the bird distinguished it from the others flying across the pale sky. Our options now. The bright colors of the bird contrasted with the pale sky while it was flying. Hmm, okay. Next one says, the pale sky made the birds noticeable while flying as they had bright colors. All right, so we have the pale sky, we have bright colors. The next one says, the pale sky made the birds distinguished, particularly the one with bright colors. Hmm, all right. And the last one says, the bright colors against the pale sky made the birds stand out among those flying by. Now, all of these mentioned the birds, the pale sky, and the bright colors. But which one has this message? The bright colors of the bird distinguished it from the others flying across the pale sky. So this particular bird, because of its bright colors, stands out among the other birds as they are flying. Which of these four? You know which one it is. Which one says this bird has bright colors and because of that, you can make it out. You can see it distinctly different from the other birds, not necessarily just against the sky, but you can see it against the other birds. Yes, you are correct. The bright colors against the pale sky made the birds stand out among those flying by. So this bird, because of its bright colors, stands out among the other birds. You have to mention the fact that this bird and the other birds are contrasted somehow. And then you bring in the backdrop of the sky. The rest of them really focus more on showing you that the bird is visible but it doesn't show you that this bird, more than the other birds, is visible. All right, so let's continue. 
I cannot understand why you have done this since you tell me that Mark means a lot to you. Here are your options. Since Mark means a lot to you, the reason for your action is puzzling to me. Next option. Since you tell me that Mark means a lot to you, he cannot understand why you have done this. C says, you tell me that Mark means a lot to you. He cannot understand why you have done this. And then D says, Mark cannot mean a lot to you or else I know you would not have done this. Now let's look carefully at our original. I cannot understand why you have done this since you tell me that Mark means a lot to you. So let's look at option C. Who is the one that doesn't understand in option C? As opposed to the original. The original says, I cannot understand. But option C says, he cannot understand. Same goes for option B. Option B also says, he cannot understand. So right there, we can cancel out B and C. So let's look closer now at A and D. So A says, since Mark means a lot to you, the reason for your action is puzzling to me. All right. Kind of getting the gist. Last one says, Mark cannot mean a lot to you or else I know you would not have done this. Between A and D, which one are you choosing? Choose carefully. Remember now, A or D needs to say, I cannot understand why you have done this since you tell me that Mark means a lot to you. And your answer, therefore, should be, since Mark means a lot to you, the reason for your action is puzzling to me. Puzzling means I don't understand. And you said he means a lot to you. So since he means a lot to you. Now, let's move on to our next one. The news shocked me so much that I almost forgot what I wanted to say. We've had those moments. So A says, the news was so shocking that I could not move. B says, I could hardly remember my message after such shocking news. C says, I nearly didn't speak again after the shock of the news. And the last one says, I was so shocked by the news that I could hardly speak. Which of these conveys the news shocked me so much that I almost forgot what I wanted to say? Be very careful. So the news has to be shocking to the point where you almost forgot something you were going to say. Yes, that's the answer. I could hardly remember my message after such shocking news. Very good. Next one. Mary still wanted to marry John, even though he had lost all his money. Mary is a good girl. A. Mary agreed to marry John, although he had lost all his money. All right. Think about that. B. The loss of all John's money did not affect Mary's wish to marry him. All right. Think about that. C. John's money did not matter to Mary, who still wanted to marry him. All right. And the last one says, Mary intended to marry John even if he were to lose all his money. Now, keep in mind what the original says. She still wants to marry him even though he has lost all his money. So, this one here says if he were to lose all his money, meaning he hasn't lost it yet. So, that is not it because he has lost it in the original. The next one says, John's money did not matter. She still wanted to marry him. It doesn't quite capture the idea that John has no money. When it says John, John's money did, doesn't matter, it sounds as if it's the fact that he has money that doesn't matter. So we can't think of that one yet. But look at B. It says the loss of all his money did not affect her wish to marry him. And look at A. She agreed to marry him although he had lost all his money. Look carefully at your original. She still wanted to marry him even though he had lost his money. 
So your answer, of course, must be B. The loss of his money did not affect her wish to marry him. So he's lost the money, but she still wants to marry him. So let's look at construction shift now. Now, in a previous lesson, we looked at this, but let's look at a different graphic. So we're all familiar with the Rubik's Cube, right? So the whole point is to try and get the tiles to match up. So right here, we have one that is completed. So that would be our complete sentence. When you construction shift now, you're going to shift them around, move around the different blocks. But the idea is you still want to end up with a complete sentence. However, the complete sentence is going to be slightly different. So notice the first one we had red, white, blue. We shifted around some bits and pieces. Then we ended up with red, yellow, and blue. So you still have some of the original components of the original sentence, but there are some sections that are going to be different. Now the different sections would be the ones that you're told to include. So you have the original sentence, you're given either something to start the sentence with instead or something to include instead. But when you do that, you try not to change the sentence itself. It still must retain the essential meaning it had before. So naturally, when you construct, you build or you create or you recreate. Shifting now, of course, you're going to move around some parts. Like I just said, you're going to move some things around. And then when you do construction shift in your exam or in practice, what you're doing, you're creating a new sentence using the different elements that you are given. All right. Now, you don't want to change the overall meaning and you don't want to change anything outside of what you're given to change. You want to keep the integrity intact. All right. So. Here are some tips. Naturally, again, and you'll see this quite often, you have to read the original sentence. There's no way to change a sentence if you don't know what you're changing. Of course, look at the meaning segments. So when you cut up the sentence into different parts, what does each part mean? Something similar to what you did in the construction, in the equivalent sentences. Make note of the prompt that you should use to either start the sentence or to include in the sentence. And that is very important because that is what will determine what you add. Then, of course, you have to break down the original sentence, deconstruct it. Then you're going to shift around the segments now to see how best they can be rephrased to suit the prompt. And what I would suggest, scribble it down, write down the new sentence, because when you write down the new sentence, that can help you to see if you really did the right thing. And then you're going to read the new one, compare it to the original. All right, so here's an example for you. A doctor is not likely to perform competently in her field of specialization unless she first acquires adequate experience. You're going to substitute without for unless so that's the part you're going to take out and then in the new sentence you'll end up using one of these a b c or d and this is what you would end up with you'd have to use first acquiring and then your new sentence would be a doctor is not likely to perform competently in her field of specialization without first acquiring adequate experience okay so these are the instructions you're likely to see for the construction shift section. Revise each of the following sentences according to the directions that follow it. Do not change the meaning of the original sentence. Look at the choices A to D for the correct word or phrase that should be included in your revised sentences and mark the cor corresponding letter. All right, so let's look at our first one. The student said that he had not provoked the security guard. Your prompt is that you're supposed to change the word said to denied. So instead of the student said, you should say the student denied. So you would write that down, the student denied. Now, in your new sentence, would you include never having provoked, ever having provoked, not to have provoked, or 
to have provoked. Remember now, you're rewriting this sentence saying the student denied. What would you include in it? Yes, ever having provoked. The student denied ever having provoked the security guard. So this is what you would have as your new sentence. The student denied ever having provoked the security guard. Remember, it always helps to write it down so you can see the moving parts, so you can see if what you have actually is correct. So always write it down. Scribble it down. Use your paper. Mark it up as much as you want. So absent-minded was he that he did not recognize me. Now, what you're going to do is start the sentence with a different phrase. So instead of so absent-minded was he, you're going to start it with he did not. But you want to still keep the meaning that he did not recognize me for some reason or the other. So if you start with he did not, what should follow it? And because of what follows it, what should you include? So would your new sentence include as... In that, being that, or since that. Start your sentence with, he did not recognize me. Well, yes, the recognize me part would go with it. And therefore, you would have the word as in your new sentence. And this would be your new sentence, actually. He did not recognize me as he is very absent-minded. And notice the careful note at the bottom. Being that is something we hear a lot, but it is not standard. It is not a standard expression. So do not use it in your formal writing. Do not use it in any formal context. Being that is just something that is said, but you really ought not to say it because it is not correct grammatically. Our next sentence now. People from crowded nations cannot get over the accessibility of Canada's natural environment in all its magnificence. All right, so now what you're going to do, start it with something different. And for many of these exercises, they tend to give you phrases to begin the new sentence with. Once in a while, you'll get a substitution, but most of the time, it's something that you must start the sentence with, all right? So what you should start this sentence with it is impossible for. So it is impossible for what? Keep in mind, you want to convey the idea that people from crowded nations cannot get over the accessibility of Canada's natural environment in all its magnificence. So if you start it with, it is impossible for, what section would you put after that? It is impossible for people from a crowded nation Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. All right. So if you start it like that, then you would end up using to get over and look at how come you would use to get over. It is impossible for people from crowded nations to get over the accessibility of Canada's natural environment in all its magnificence. So remember, you know, it is key that you write the new sentence down. When you write the new sentence down, that is how you will see which of these you would end up using. If you don't write it down, it's going to be more difficult for you. All right, so here's another one. The heavy rains prevented us from attending the program. And you're to start with, we were prevented. So if you start with, we were prevented, what were you prevented from doing again? Attending the program. So that's the part that would follow. So we were prevented from attending the program. Therefore, what would you end up using? Because of, in addition, since, or in spite of. If you start off by saying we were prevented from attending the program, then naturally, you'd end up having to say because of, because there's, that is the reason why you were prevented. So the sentence you would have written to guide you would have been, we were prevented from attending the program because of the heavy rains. So all you have done is rewritten the sentence and you have used back the same meaning in it, but you use a different phrase to start it and a different phrase inside of it. But the same meaning is there. You didn't change the meaning at all. So you shifted it, but you didn't obliterate it completely. Next one. 
the masqueraders who were jumping to the rhythm of the steel band music became very exhausted after a while and had to go home early. Now, this one, you're not going to start with anything. You're going to change a word. So you're going to change instead of using so, instead of using very, sorry, you're going to use so. So look in the original sentence. Where is the very? It says became very exhausted. So you're going to say became so exhausted. So of course, you know, you're going to start. The masqueraders who were jumping to the rhythm of the steel band music became so exhausted. What would you end up using now in the rest of that sentence? Would you use and consequently they, and they, for they, or that they? Which of these would you use? You'd end up using that they. Why is that? Let's look at the new sentence you would have. The masqueraders who were jumping to the rhythm of the steel band music became so exhausted after a while that they had to go home early. So notice the new sentence incorporates the same idea as the original sentence, but you use this word that you're told to substitute. And then because of that, you ended up having to use this phrase to make it make sense. Keep that in mind at all times. So that's all we have time for today. Until next time, wash your hands, wear your mask, sanitize, and keep your distance.